hunt of problems of this kind around and about. The difficulty is what any government can do about it. And that's one of the reasons why I was glad when David Cameron, to some extent, um, switched the emphasis of his, his speaking on what the next Conservative government is going to do onto the need to get our public finances in order. Because that is something which a government can do, that's something which governments, if I may say so, have in the past done, and they can, it can be done again. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty with the broken society thing, however accurate it is, is it is very, very difficult for a government in a, in a free country, and I'm delighted we are made a free country, and a democracy, to do much about it. Well, it's not what David Cameron says. He thinks they can. He says Tory plans for education and tackling crime are a blueprint for mending the broken society. Well, I hope are he's right. Not, well, I hope he's right. And but you don't think he is right. Educate, uh, we shall see. The proof of the pudding is in eating. We shall see, and he's quite right to improve standards of education. I mean, education is a real problem in this country. Yeah, but you said that that isn't, that, you know, looking for these um, answers was no, no point. No, I said it was you very difficult. All right. I said it was very difficult. Education is everything. Jenny Tong, do you believe well, it's a broken <clears throat> society? Um, no, I don't. I think we have huge problems, but I don't think we're a broken society. Goodness me, we're British folks. I mean, can we just have a little bit of pride in our country and who we are and what we are? What did you, sorry, what did you interject? <laughs> Hold on a second, I don't something. normally allow interjections. Sorry, sorry, I didn't that used to mean something being British, but it doesn't mean mm. anything anymore. And you'd ask well, everybody in here that understand that. habit in this country and and Jane actually I'm sorry I think you're you're lovely but you have just demonstrated how it is very very easy to be cheap and populist and slag tell, everything tell me, off tell me what I said that anybody was cheap and popular well it's just that you are negative about absolutely no, everything. No, I'm not negative. No, no hang on. No, 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 it's no. my turn. We're talking about a 10 lots. and an 11-year-old yeah, boy. Yes. That was the so question. Am I. Being and attacked so am I. By and boys so who acted Jane. like savages. Now, you find me a positive note out of that, Jenny. Yes. The boys yeah. that acted like this savages, and you know full well, it's not a positive note, it's even more negative, are as much victims as the children they have I'm not oh. saying they're not. They I am not saying they're not. But don't accuse me. You attacked Ben and the government. They have tried to do things. The Sure Start programmes and nursery education and childcare for single parents. They have done quite a lot in that direction. But what, when you and come, at least no, when Ben you left Cam journalism and became a politician yeah, to try and do something off, about it. You're me. way off the point. The question is, was <laughs> David Cameron electioneering when he talked about a broken society? Well, yes I or think, no? In your I view? think, I, d I don't know whether he was electioneering or not, I just think it was in very bad taste to actually hold that speech press conference with all around it on a day that the, that, right. th that verdict was being given. Do you want to... We, Okay, I, you can just answer your cheap, that you're cheap and yeah, whatever it was. I answered populist. the question, which was about two young boys behaving like savages. They are victims as well. I have written that myself. I absolutely agree with you on that. I did not attack Ben and the government. I am merely saying I took him to task on the whole parent thing. I'm not blaming parents. I don't think parents okay, are the well issue that's here. Fine. So I think lousy state how education how is a huge issue. How most young people are doing? How most young people are doing in right. school? Don't, don't because Murray. young people, okay. the figures of young people unemployed, Ben, are sky high. Douglas you cannot Murray. deny that. I think the, the answer, the swift answer to the question is, of course, he was electioneering. That's his job this year. Um, and uh, we've got to be very careful as a public not to fall for the kind of procedural issues which the government and the press very often make these things into. Will the report be leaked? Will it come out? Will it not? That's actually not the issue. And as so often we're being shunted into a cul-de-sac when there is a much bigger issue. We're not just a broken society. We're a society in Britain that has been assaulted for decades now. We've been assaulted in our sense, apart from anything else, of who we are, what we are whether we have a right to be as a nation. <coughs> We've been subjected to decades of intense immigration, which has brought many, many, many benefits, many benefits and many negatives.
many benefits and many negatives. But one of the other things it has done is to assault Britain and the British people as an identity. If you look back four or five decades now, what was it that Britain uh, uh, was signified by? What was it that uh, epitomized Britain? It was institutions, uh, the monarchy, parliament, uh, the, the army, the armed forces, all of these things, all of these things have been assaulted and brought down one by one in recent years by government after government and elite after elite. What we see now in this society, which is just starting to wake up to this fact, is a government and others who are saying, we have pulled it down, can anyone help us put it back together? Okay. And what they will realize is what every small C, not big C conservative, realizes, which is that it is a lot easier to pull things down than it is to build them up. And this is going to take a long time. It isn't about one press release. It isn't even going to be about one term of a conservative government. And it certainly isn't going to be about tinkering around the edges. We are going to need a revolutionary government to sort this out. And there are none on the horizon. None in the, in the yellow tie, though. You, sir. I think it's excessive to refer to Britain as a broken society. I certainly think it's fragmenting big time. So I, I echo that last point. I think it's fragmenting big time, and I don't have any confidence in either major party to solve it. Absolutely. They haven't got the commitment to do it. And, and you, sir, uh, the man who made the interjection earlier on, yes. Yeah, uh, the, the do gooders in this country look after the people that perpetuate the crimes, they never look after the victims. And that's why people have got no confidence in some of the politicians up there and they go against the guy to, we have no one to vote for here no. okay. in this election. That's true. Absolutely. And the woman here in the very front row? Me? Yes. Yeah, I have to say I do agree with the gentleman behind me. I lived abroad for 13 years and I came back three years ago and the, the, the Great Britain, as it used to be known now, apparently it's just called Britain now, um, <laughs> but it has totally changed from the society that I grew up in, um, immigration, law and order, and just the, the whole thing, yes, it has fragmented, but it's getting worse, and it will be broken before very long. Okay. And the man back there? I think, first of all, that, yes, it was blatantly electioneering by David Cameron to come out with that statement. But we're talking about um, broken Britain. Um, in relevance to this specific subject of the two young lads in Doncaster, um, when are we going to start looking at the... Uh, broken social services, which is a very large cog in the British machine. How often are they going to come out and say, oh, we could have prevented this, but we chose not to? OK. And, and the man there, bang in the middle, in blue, you, sir? I think it's electioneering because if you think it, look at Jamie Bolger in 1993, that was under Conservative government. And I also disagree with the lady over there that it wasn't the parents because... Um, at a young age, they were like giving them marijuana, and it was, it was obviously not very good parenting. You can't blame a government on that. It was, it's obviously the parents you know, have got to be blamed. Okay, and one, one more point. The man in the third row. Sorry, no, don't, don't go on. The man in the, in the centre there, yes. What this uh, exposes is a lack of values in our society. That lack of values, and I suspect many of the people who've just said yes will not agree with my next point, had not suddenly disappeared in the last 10 years or so and I'm afraid someone on the left there needs a history lesson. Great Britain was great in some ways but not so great in many others. Suez was in the 1950s for a start. So this simplistic notion that the world was once good and everything is suddenly broken is not true. What has happened and what, and what not very far from you and what has happened is that the man sitting on your right, Mr Dimbleby, presided over a set of principles, which Mr Cameron's about to replicate, that says that individuals should look after themselves and maybe their families, but not go any further, and yet at the same time has the temerity to say something's happened to society. Society is more than me, and okay. it's more than us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Now, <laughs> we'll move on. A question from Dominic Birch, please. How can we ensure that in future scientists comply with the Freedom of Information Act regarding climate change data that should be in the public domain? This is in the light of the rebuke that the University of East Anglia has had. Indeed, they've been told they acted illegally in not revealing information over climate change, um, uh, having apparent, well, a, a series of emails that people wanted to find, uh, and they refused to reveal them and they've been told they broke the law and they're somewhat embarrassed by it. The Chancellor says he's going to look into it, the Vice-Chancellor does. Uh, ben Bradshaw, you um, 
horrified by this? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a terrible mistake, and the information commissioner has done his job, and, and you know, a good job is done too. And uh, I think the way to avoid it is to use and honour the Freedom of Information Act. It's one of the pieces of legislation, I think, uh, one of the things, best pieces of legislation this government has brought in. We didn't know anything about what was going on uh, before 1997. We now have this Freedom of Information Act. It should be respected, it should be used. And I think the terrible shame about all of this is because of all of the allegations and suggestions of